Daniel Sun's crane kick was so powerful that, listen, this thing ruined Johnny for over 30 years and created a whole new generation of youth karate rivals. The Russo can sure hold a grudge, can he? You know that? That's some kick. Since the debut of the first movie all the way back in 1984, people have been examining and re-examining the ever-escalating story of how an awkward kid learned to deal with his bullies through the karate lessons of his building super? Was Daniel the real bully? Was the crane kick even legal? What was Terry Silver's deal? Get the hell out of here. Cobra Kai has the answers and the near endless series of callbacks, including these. It's a new era at Cobra Kai. Come join us. Owing to the considerable age difference between actors, Daniel did not end up with a love interest in Karate Kid 3, but instead a friend in Jessica Andrews. The reason she gives Daniel for being in LA instead of her home in Ohio is that her boyfriend cheated on her with one Elizabeth Ann Rooney. You mean Elizabeth Ann Rooney? Or when the cousins try to discuss Daniel's childhood issues continuing as adults, Rooney starts taunting the two until Samantha kicks her into the bar. One of the enduring metaphors throughout the original movie series that recurs during the series is the bonsai tree. When the bad boy of karate Mike Barnes splits Miyagi's prize bonsai tree, Miyagi points out that the roots are strong. And like Miyagi, Daniel assures his students that their roots are strong. Karate didn't necessarily get rid of Daniel's bully problem so much as escalated it in increasingly intense bullies. The end of season 5 sees Daniel and his bullies, Johnny, Chosen, and Mike Barnes all coming together. In an earlier moment when Chosen and Johnny go to confront Silver without Daniel, they bond over how much they hated Daniel and what they did to him. Chosen mentions the time he robbed Daniel while on a date. Johnny talks about the time he and his boys ran Daniel off a cliff on their motorcycles. Chosen then goes for the win by mentioning that he tried to duel Daniel to death. I fight him to death. Oh yeah, what are you, ghost or something? Kreese bloodied his knuckles after Mr. Miyagi stepped in and stopped him from roughing Johnny up after his loss to LaRusso at the All Valley. When talking about the torture they plan to put LaRusso through in Karate Kid 3, Kreese has a request make his knuckles bleed make his knuckles bleed in a flashback a young chosen is reprimanded by his uncle sato for putting a pillow in the sand meant to toughen up his hands in a fight with silver and stingray's condo daniel bloodies his knuckles when his punch misses and hits a wall reminding him of how deep in his head silver can get Tori learns the same lesson when sensei kim upgrades silver's knuckle busting dummy with stone slabs there was just something special about the way Mr. Miyagi called his pupil Daniel-san. Even his wife found it endearing, as she has him on her phone as Hubby-san. Chosen brings back Daniel-san for season 5, bringing all the warm and fuzzies. When Kreese makes his special request to make Daniel bleed, his enthusiasm for that suggestion is extreme, yelling with glee, Oh yeah, I like that, and then cackling like a madman. Hey, I like that! Oh, I like that, Johnny! I'm gonna use that! <laughs> Later, Sensei Kim suggests a leadership challenge to test Tori's loyalty. He repeats that line, but in a way, way calmer manner. Oh, I like that. Yeah. He's a man who runs a company that disposes of toxic materials with the sinister sounding name Dynatox. He put his busy multi-million dollar company on hold to menace a teenager over a karate tournament. And yet, perhaps the weirdest decision involves the ascot he sports at the All Valley Finale. The ascot makes its debut in a flashback to Silver and Crease while they were over in Korea. <laughs> Nice ascot. Silver and Kreese take a huge dose of copium after Mr. Miyagi beats both of them when their evil plan is revealed to Daniel. As Daniel and Mr. Miyagi leave, they taunt the pair that they'll spread Cobra Kai throughout the valley, telling Mr. Miyagi that he won't even be a memory. When Johnny and Daniel visit Kreese in prison, during a one-on-one -on -one with Johnny trying to convince him to take up Cobra Kai's legacy, Johnny repeats Silver's threat, saying that he's in the fight to erase any memory of Kreese. You wanna know why I'm in this fight? 
so I can erase everything you did. Nothing in Karate Kid might be as notorious as the crane kick. It's the move that wins Daniel the All Valley. And hey, look, a lot of people got points for kicks to the head. It apparently wasn't a hard and fast rule. In Karate Kid 3, Silver mocks Daniel's crane kick. In season five, Johnny finally lets go of the single kick that changed his life. To put a nice bow on things, Daniel finishes off Silver with a crane kick in the finale. Say what you will about Terry Silver, he certainly does not suffer from low self-esteem. It never ceases to amaze me how small your mind is. Aside from his assurance that he can take Cobra Kai worldwide, he likes to put a stamp on Tang Sudo. In Karate Kid 3, he teaches his Quicksilver method that lists things people can't fight if they can't do, like stand, breathe, and see. In Season 5, Silver teaches Kenny a punch he calls the Silver Bullet. Branding is important. I call it the Silver Bullet. That's good. You like that, huh? Chosen was all kinds of bad. Stealing money, refusing to honor a bet, challenging Daniel to a duel to the death, even refusing to help during the typhoon. But the duel to the death is made in part because Daniel had exposed a scam that Chosen was running when weighing the harvest of the local farmers to determine how much money they get. Daniel knocked over the scale, revealing that the weights were fake. Diabolical. Except, that would mean that the crops would read heavier, giving the farmers more money. In Season 5, he admits that it was not his best plan. Maybe he meant to cheat his uncle and give a little relief to the farmers, but didn't want to lose his tough guy reputation. You insulted my Anna again. And I kill you. The bet that Chosen tried to back out of in Karate Kid 2 revolved around whether or not Daniel could break through six bricks of ice. For some reason, this is a regular fixture at that bar. It's clearly something Chosen is used to. A drunken Chosen talking Daniel up at the club tries to have Daniel demonstrate it again, only to be disappointed that it's not that kind of club. What kind of bar is this? <laughs> Perhaps the only thing more ridiculous than a millionaire CEO devoting all of his attention to menacing a teenager to avenge his also adult friend and then hiring a group of teenagers as part of his elaborate plan is that when the bad boy of karate Mike Barnes asks for his agreement with Silver to be put in writing, he does. Imagine enforcing that contract. Adult Barnes also finds this ridiculous, giving Daniel and Johnny the number of the lawyer silly enough to draw up that contract. Ah, oh, Raymond. The goofy, stunted adult who just wants to belong takes it on the chin, literally, to be part of Cobra Kai. Eventually, he regrets what he's done and runs to tell the Elder LaRussos that Cobra Kai is coming to attack the Miyagi Do and Eagle Fang kids, driving them to the scene in Johnny's old hot rod. When they get there, some Cobra Kai kids block their way, and LaRusso is reluctant to beat up a bunch of kids because, well, obviously. Instead, Raymond, aka Stingray, steps in. When he's victorious, he adopts a familiar stance to make sure the fight's over. It's the same one that Mr. Miyagi does when he saves Daniel from the bullies on Halloween. At the beginning of the original Karate Kid, Daniel spends much of it as a punching bag. Eventually, he starts bearing the marks of his beatings, including a black eye. To hide that from his doting mother, he dons a pair of too big for his head gas station sunglasses. When Silver beats Daniel at Stingray's pad, he heads back to work hiding the new black eye with a similar pair of sunglasses. Karate Kid 3 wanted there to be no question that Terry Silver is evil. So he's not just a millionaire businessman, he's the head of a company that disposes of toxic waste. Unscrupulously, of course. To demonstrate that, he takes a call in his giant sink bubble bath where he berates an employee for being unable to dump chloride sludge into Borneo. When Silver returns, Dimitri does a little research and finds out that Silver is in fact facing legal consequences for doing that. What better way to end a sports movie than with sudden death? Sudden death returns in season four, with the announcer noting the last time it happened was 1985, when LaRusso fought Barnes. For the first time since 1985! 
Silver isn't the only Cobra Kai instructor that's big on branding. At the original Cobra Kai dojo, he has a life-size cardboard standee of himself in a fighting stance, just in case anyone forgot whose dojo it was. When he wrestles control of Cobra Kai from Johnny, he returns to form, having another standee of himself made. All of Miyagi's cars are intact during Cobra Kai, including the actual Ford which was given to Makio at the end of the series. Even the rowboat that taught him balance is there. The teenage date spot of choice for Valley Teens is Golf and Stuff, which is a real place, 25 miles south of the valley. Ali and Daniel explore the ups and downs of their relationship there, including the ever-embarrassing having your mom show up as your ride while your romantic rival drives a convertible. Hmm. Miguel and Sam have their first date there in Season 1. In Season 3, Hawk and Company, as part of Cobra Kai, acts up at the arcade, prompting a fight in the closed laser tag arena where Hawk breaks Dimitri's arm. When Miguel's biological father gets suspicious of Miguel, he goes through his phone where it shows that one of his recent calls was to golf and stuff. When Mr. Miyagi has Kreese in a vulnerable position, he repeats Kreese's motto only to honk his nose because that kind of weird self-seriousness is goofy. Later, when Daniel has a showdown with Chosen instead of killing him, Daniel honks Chosen's nose. Decades later, when Chosen gets his rematch, Chosen finally gets to do what he's wanted to do ever since. Honk Daniel's nose, showing that Chosen has done some growing of his own. Relationship insecurity is just part of being a teenager, especially a teenager in a movie. When Ali tries to tell Daniel that she had long ago ended things with Johnny, he asks how long. She responds weeks, prompting Daniel to ask, weeks? One week? Five weeks? How many weeks is weeks? When Dimitri tells Eli of a breakup that happened weeks ago, Eli has the same question. There's another echo of someone handling romantic issues poorly. We meet Johnny declaring his status as an ex-degenerate because he's starting his senior year the next day celebrating a new hymn. When his buddy peeps Daniel talking to Allie, he tells Johnny he's not the only one doing something new right before we find out that Johnny fundamentally does not understand breakups. When young Anthony LaRusso is peer pressured into bullying, one of his friends sees the young LaRusso's crush talking to the target of their bullying, Kenny. He tells Anthony in the same way, telling him, everyone's trying something new. Daniel espouses the virtue of 80s soft rock, including Peter Cetera, who sang The Power of Love for Karate Kid 2. American Idol star Carrie Underwood shows up to sing Moment of Truth, the end credit song from the first movie. The Moody Blues provide the background music for the ice chopping scene in Karate Kid 2, with the song Rock and Roll Over You, which also appears in Season 3. Daniel touts his Bananarama pancakes. Bananarama sings the song Cruel Summer, which plays during Daniel's post-beating return to school. Before LaRusso, before Johnny, there was Daryl Vidal. In Karate Kid, he's eliminated from the tournament by Cobra Kai member Tommy. In Cobra Kai, we find out his name as Tommy and Johnny reminisce over besting the skilled fighter, and in Season 3, Kreese talks about Vidal beating Johnny in his first tournament. He is currently a grandmaster who teaches in California. Remember that tournament back in 83? You beat Vidal to get to the semis. There are many iconic things in Karate Kid, but certainly a standout is the skeleton costumes the Cobra Kai kids wear on Halloween. Miguel sports the same costume as Johnny takes him under his wing. When Tori starts to find a home at Cobra Kai, she sports a hoodie with the skeleton design as well. One of the early delights of Cobra Kai Season 3 was the return of Elizabeth Shue as Allie. It also means that we get to revisit the memories from her perspective. That includes Johnny breaking her radio and the notorious blueberry pie incident, which was a deleted scene from the original movie. We also get the other side of the story from the opening of Karate Kid 2 when Daniel blames Allie for denting his vintage Ford. She insists that she told Daniel that the brakes were starting to go. I told you that the brakes on Mr. Miyagi's car were gonna go. Karate Kid movies need a killer move. The crane kick from the original, the drum technique from 2, and the kata from 3. Daniel takes care of the crane kick, but his daughter revisits the other moves. When she's showing Miguel around the dojo, she shows him the hand drum. When she needs to focus, she performs the kata. 
If you had not seen the Karate Kid movies and met Daniel in Cobra Kai, you could be mistaken in thinking that his life has always been fancy. That's what Robbie thinks. Daniel explains that he didn't even go to college and instead tells him the tale of the Daniel Fund, the money his mother set aside for him to go to college. Instead, he used that money to fly Mr. Miyagi to Okinawa. Mr. Miyagi helps him win that money back, which he then spends opening up a bonsai shop for Mr. Miyagi only to have Mike Barnes mess all that up. Instead, he leveraged Mr. Miyagi's car collection into a chain of dealerships. Any screenwriter will tell you, the line that they think will be the quoted line will not be, and instead, it'll be some innocuous line that didn't even register to them. That's the case with Johnny's teammate Tommy's best known line, get him in a body bag. That's his taunt as Johnny fits an injured Daniel. Get him a body bag! Yeah! <laughs> Johnny reconnects with his Cobra Kai alum, including Tommy, just in time as Tommy succumbs to cancer, ending his run in a body bag. Maybe the craziest callback is Shimpo Miyagi, the fictional founder of Miyagi-Do that Mr. Miyagi talks about in the movie and chosen in the series. There's a real Miyagi. Shoujun Miyagi founded Goju Ryu Karate in Okinawa. See? Layers upon layers here.